Hey guys, how's it going? So what do I got now? Got this Honda Accord. I got towed into me. I uh, I don't know what year it is. 2002, something like that. 2004. I don't know. Anyway, I got towed in for a no start. Let's see what it does. I haven't done anything to it yet. I just got the key here. I was told it cranks, but doesn't start. Broken timing belt? Nope, it's not a broken timing belt. Hold on. I hear like one cylinder like popping almost. Okay. And it could just be the way the motor itself sounds. So from here, we're gonna have to check spark, fuel. It does not sound like the time belt's broken. The only thing that I find a little concerning, and I'm curious as to why this is, on the passenger side, somebody's taking that lower cover down. And if I'm not mistaken, I'm not positive, I'm not positive, but if I'm not mistaken, I think a fuel pump really may be on that side, but I'm not sure. So I'm going to ignore that for now, but I have found in the past that sometimes when you see stuff like this, it's, it leads to that somebody was searching for a problem and they've taken stuff apart or whatever. Plus I see this knife on the floor, so did somebody cut something under there? Hopefully not, but we're going to find out. So let's go underneath the hood and let's see what we got. So I looked it up. It's actually a 99. And if I'm going to have to venture a guess, without looking at anything guess yet, I'm going to say the distributor probably went poopy. Common failure on these things. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to check up for spark first, because that's the easiest thing to check. And then we're going to go from there. But a lot of times on these things, I have found over the years that the distributors just go kaputs. They have an igniter in them that goes bad. They have a coil in them that goes bad. At that point, you're just better off getting a whole distributor and just replacing the entire thing as a unit. Uh, I've already showed you once already uh, about changing distributors, and it was on a Honda CRV. And I actually have another Honda Accord here. Over there. And that one needs a distributor. So, I got a funny feeling that's what we're going to be dealing with. But we're going to do a spark test on this and see. That other Honda Accord is a weird one. Uh, you could drive that thing for a day or so, and then all of a sudden while you're driving, it'll just shut off on you. And um, pull over, come to a stop, and then it'll start right back up. Uh, I did finally verify it, and I did at that point get it. I thought it was a distributor, I wasn't exactly sure. But I did finally get it to where I did see that it had no spark for a few moments, and all of a sudden it had spark again. That's a rarity. I've never seen that happen on one of these Honda distributors when they go bad. Usually it's something like this where they don't start. Still might not be it, though. It could be something else. So... But let's, let's go that direction first and see what happens. And there we see my little spark tester. These things you can pick up from uh, Amazon or whatever. The reason I'm using this style, going straight to ground, is I just want to see, and hopefully I can see, going straight to ground if I got a spark. You have other ones where you can actually run it right to the plug with the, this little light in between. And this way you can judge to see if you, know, you have actually spark getting through to the plug. Sometimes it makes a difference depending on what you're doing. Let's see, can I even see it from inside the car? Uh, yeah, I can. But can you see it? That's the question. Let's see. All right. Doesn't look like I got spark. Now, I never trust a tool like that right off the bat. I'm going to verify the tool works. I've been led down a wrong road in the past with different things, whereas the tool wasn't actually working, and, you know, I thought it was, and it messed me up. So I want to verify that that tool works by hooking it up to something else and seeing what happens. So I actually have it hooked up to the other Honda, because I know this car will run right now, although I haven't started it in a week. I'm waiting for a distributor for this. So the spark tester should spark, but it'll have a misfire too. Where the key goes. So it'll have a misfire because obviously I have wire disconnected and it's flashing around only in the video and it, 
the way the video shows up, it shows erratic, but it's not. Now right, let me shut this down. We're back on a Honda, and I have a replacement distributor right there. So what you need to remember is the orientation of the ignition wires, because that, yes, that makes a difference. Some people just willy-nilly throw them back on and wonder why a car won't start. Uh, the nice thing about this is the gear that's on here it can only go in one way. So you're only going to get a chance to put it in one way. There is a slight timing adjustment. I'm going to act like you guys are doing this in your driveway. And I'm going to show you how to set this thing up so you don't really have to worry too much about it. And it'll be close. It ain't going to be exact, but it'll be close enough. I don't know how this car ran beforehand, but we're going to take it for a ride. And then a lot of times I'll adjust it while driving. Uh, but like I said, so you want to figure out where the wires are. If you don't have a schematic, draw one out. This way you remember. Sometimes on the distributor, it will give you a 1, which this one does not. I mean, it has an A1 next to that one post there. I mean, could that mean 1? It's possible. Let me compare it to the car and figure it out. So A1 is this one here, which goes to cylinder 1. So, yep, that is correct. So, okay. What I'm going to do now is I'm just going to try to either remember or I'm going to write down, mark, whatever. Maybe take a photo of it this way. I know. But let's get the distributor out. Two bolts. Kind of hard to film because they're underneath. Going to have to go with the 12 going in that way, quarter inch drive. Uh, one thing I wanted to show you. See this air inlet hose? See how it's torn down there? If this was a mass air car, that'll create all sorts of drivability problems because you've got unmetered air going into the engine and it doesn't know what to do. Uh, Nissans, uh, it's a very common issue. Uh, Toyotas that have mass air, it's a very common issue, which most of them do. Uh, but yeah, so just something to keep in mind. If you have a mass air car, just make sure that the hose leading from the mass air, which would be over in this area, over to the throttle body. Make sure it doesn't have any cracks in it, especially if you have a drivability <laughs> drive drive issue. Yep, okay, you know what I mean. I have the bottom bolt out. I have the one in the back loose. So now I'm going to pay attention here. It'll rotate a little bit that way. That's about where it was before. And a little bit that way. So it's a little more beyond center going towards this end. So I just want to remember that putting it in. Plus when I take it out there should be witness marks that will help me figure out exactly where it was. And as you can see that one bolt there is in a booger of a spot down in the back and like I said this front one goes underneath here so it's kind of difficult to show you what I got to do but you get the idea so let me get these out and let's pull the distributor out so now with both bolts out and I got the electrical connection disconnected it's just one plug no big deal this thing should pull out there we go so now like I said if you look oh look at that this one barely has any adjustment to it that one does this one doesn't so Oh, this one's the same, so it's, there's really not going to be any adjustment to it. Okay, good to know. Good to know. All right, so let's just put this distributor someplace safe, like there. And let's look in there, and let's see. So now we're going to judge how is that on the camshaft. It's off to one side, so let's get our distributor set off to one side, and then let's get it in place. So now, obviously, when you go in, and let's say you are making a mistake and you don't know exactly which way you're going in, if you're off, you can always reverse a distributor, like flop it over. Like, let's see. Am I going in correctly? Possibly. Maybe not. You know what I'm going to do, though? Is I'm going to put some lube on a distributor to know for sure. Let me do that. Now, when I said lube, basically, all I did was take some of the oil that was inside the hole there, wipe it around the seal. So now, let's see. It should go in place. Oh, there it is. So, it's in. So now, i got to catch the bolts. Like I said, that bottom bolt, it's just going to set it up one way, and that's going to be the end of it. So, there really is no timing adjustment on this one. Timing is all basically computer controlled. So, let's get the bolts caught. Now, those bolts, in case you're having a problem... Get the magnetic inserts, and um, uh, I had gotten an a, uh, email from a couple of different people talking about like they sell magnetic inserts that you can put into the sockets. I'm gonna be getting a set. I haven't gotten them yet, but you could use a piece of paper, fold it over, a piece of tape, something like that, just to hold the bolt in the socket so you don't drop it. So let's get those in place. 
distributor bolts are in and tight. Like I said, once that bolt was in place, there was no movement to it. I did verify that. Uh, basically just connector on. And the firing order is 1342 on this, going in this direction. So we have one there. We have three here. We have four here. And we have two here. Ooh, we got one, three, four, two. And I did drop my wrench down there somewhere. I had a wrench just in case. I have to get a magnet to get that up. Uh, but yeah, let's push this wire back down. And let's see if she actually starts. Hopefully my diagnostics are correct. I don't recall if the distributor controls fuel on this thing. Because if it doesn't, then it might be partially flooded. Let's see. Yeah, I think it's flooded. And it did crank it did hit off for a second. Battery might be too dead now. Yeah, I think the battery's too weak now. Right, let's go get a jumper pack and try starting this thing. Yeah, let's try that. Yeah, it was flooded from fuel, that's why it was cranking so odd too. Okay. 276,000 miles. Alright. I'm happy with that. Actually, you know what? Let me back this thing up so I can get my tool out from underneath there without having to get a magnet. Got nothing behind me. Over towed this in, put it awfully close to this vehicle. Well, let's uh, get my stuff out and let's take it for a ride. So everything on the road test went fine. The car runs okay. Now see, see how I had the issue when I went to go start it? It was just cranking. I've seen people where other mechanics, where they, they went down a rabbit hole. I mean, I've done it myself. But they go down a rabbit hole and think, oh my God, that didn't fix it. And they start looking elsewhere. Well, it partially flooded. So you kind of got to get it cranking fast. It was cranking way too slow. That's why I put the jumper on it. But you got to get it cranking fast, hold your foot to the floor, stuff like that, just to clear it out. Because it's very easy, like I said, to go in the wrong direction. I mean, it was already fixed, so I'm basically going from there. All right, so that's it. Hopefully you got something from that video. If you did, hit that like button. If you could, please subscribe. Tell your friends to subscribe, too. If you want to share my videos, go right ahead. Uh, but, yeah, so that's about it. All right, hopefully you got something. All right, guys, have a great day. Keep wrenching.